Hi, and welcome to another in Blazing's review of the XB X220 Mark II and the XB220. Both frames were sent by XB for this review. So, full disclosure, even though I got this frame for free, it will not impact my final judgement. I simply present the information and let you make the decision for yourself. During this video, I'll be giving away the SEMA X5UW that I've recently reviewed. You can click here to watch that review. So the first one to send me a PM with the correct code word will win the SEMA X5UW. Please note, you must like and be a subscriber to qualify. So if you haven't already done so, click subscribe and get ready to write down the code word that is going to be somewhere in this video. And now on to the review. I received these two frames not too long ago and they were packaged inside these boxes. And my first impression was very good from the get go. The extra care and attention that went into the presentation has really paid off. The box contents were individually packed and were neatly organised into separate compartments. You can tell that they care about their product. Well, enough of looking, let's cut this one wide open, shall we? This is the arm plate. At the time of recording, you may have noticed that it was missing the four outer female threading, and I had to improvise by using some longer screws and nuts to secure the arm into place. I let XB know, and they didn't hesitate to send out another arm plate with the correct threading. Not only did they do this, but they also threw in some ESC covers, motor protectors, as well as two battery straps. These extras are separate options that you can purchase on their website at xb.kr. Except for the battery straps, they do include this in the frame kits. Next is the HD action camera plates and the FPV side plates. There have been reports of this mount breaking the back LCD display of a GoPro or an action camera that have a display on the back. As reported by RC Group's forum member Melilla Sausage. I hope I got that right. If not, then I apologise. It was suggested to use some cardboard slotted in between to help prevent this from happening. And then we have the top plate. And the bottom plate. We have the 6mm and 8mm M3 bolt head screws. Looks of decent quality and note how clean these screws are. If this was a cheaper frame kit then this packet would certainly be brown and greasy. And this is the non-slip lipo pad and Next are these generic standoffs, nothing special, 
as with the grommet, the non-slip pad for the lipos, the shrink tubes and the 14 gauge wires. Um, these are really high quality wires and they're so flexible as well. It's nice of them to include all this but I think they should have gone the whole 9 yards and supply us with some zip ties. But oh well, I guess you can't have everything. This is the battery plate. It protects your lopos from damage from rough landings. This piece is a part of the GoPro mount. And this is the tail mount for your VTX antenna and receiver antennas. And this one is for managing your wires at the back of the quad. The arms looked pretty normal until I saw these cuts in the side of the arms. At the time I wasn't sure what these grooves were for, but it's actually for the camera side plates so that they can slot in the space. Just make sure the side of the grooves are on the inside, it'll save you from doing everything over again. They also have the small hole cut out if you wanted to put the ESC and metal wires under the arms for a cleaner look. The rest of the arms were okay so we can move on. And we almost forgot about the cool mount for your LEDs. And it's nice of them to include it in the package. And let's see how much this weighs with the LED mount. Now at first glance, this looks like a regular knurled standoff but they are of a higher quality. If you take a closer look, it has a lot more knurled bits. I tried to change to a 10mm screw to give it more durability, but there wasn't enough threading for it to go all the way in. And then you have these little standoffs for the GoPro mount. It's got this little hole in the middle. I thought it was interesting but turns out it isn't used for anything. The frame kit also includes a very high quality MarTech PDB. It's very solid and you can't go wrong with MarTech. It's a very reliable brand. They also give you a parts list and a diagram to help you with your build. are 4 millimeters, so it's good for durability. But you may want to sand down the edges and then apply CA glue to prevent delaminations. The bottom plate is 2.2 millimeters, and the top plate is 1.9. And let's see how wide the frame is from the inside. 3.12 millimeter. And let's see the diameter of this VTX hole. 6.6 .6 millimeters. And let's see how this frame weighs. 103 grams. 
and we'll just stack on everything now. No, it doesn't, but it's indeed a true X frame. So you'll be getting the best flight characteristics for racing. And the code word for the SEMA X5UW competition is bananas. <laughs> Make sure you read the important details in the description and uh, good luck. We were given a choice of which frames we'd like to review and I chose the XBX Mark II first because it suits my style of flying. The style of crashing a lot. Anyways, it looked the most durable and unlike a unibody, you can easily swap out the damaged arms. And you have the option to change to a different arm size to accommodate bigger or smaller propellers. There's a lot of benefits that come with this style of frame. Sure, you gain a bit more weight, but at least you don't have to replace the whole main plate if you have only just broken one arm. So it's a perfect fit with my flying style. Someone who's going to be crashing a lot. Beginners like me or if you need that extra durability due to the environment you're going to be flying in. And if that's the case then you're going to be breaking something quite often. And it will be wise to choose a frame that has replaceable arms. What I liked most out of the design is how the arms come together in the middle and how the arm plate already have the female threading, which eliminates the need for extra screws and nuts, which helps keep the weight down, however small that might be. I also like how the top is very easy to take off to get to your electronics and quick to put it back on and it stays intact. Usually the side plates would fall out too easily so it's less of a hassle and it's more convenient to do maintenance. For the most part all the pieces that make up the frame are well cut Although, there were more than a few rough edges. However, I had only found one hole that was cut really poorly. So XB did an okay job with the cut and finish with this one, but there's definitely room for improvement. The XBX220 Mark II has a fairly rigid frame with little to no flex. Although I did feel like there wasn't enough meat at the center of the frame where all the arms connect. It's hard to see on video but I could see and feel the carbon fiber was bending a little bit exactly where the cutouts are at. So my concern is to keep the weight down, XB have made a lot of cutouts in the bottom plate. 
I think it's a little too much, and I'm afraid the cutouts make it structurally weaker. To improve on this, they would have to put a little more meat here and here. So, to summarise everything up, I have listed all the pros and the cons right here. To conclude, the XPX220 Mark II is a simple yet well thought out design. Its style is unique. It has a dark atmosphere around it with a hint of eastern flavour. Like an evil ninja or maybe something out of the Mortal Kombat world. Having a look at the overall package. There's plenty to like about the XB220 Mark II. However, I was a little disappointed with the quality of the carbon fiber, at least on the surface. I don't think it's quite worth the premium asking price of 80 US dollars, but fortunately it's on sale right now for only 68 dollars USD and looks to be much better in value. Having said that, it's definitely not a bad effort from a brand new company and I've heard that they are actually upgrading their carbon fibre, so it seems like this is a great new company I can put my trust into and it'll be very interesting to see how they grow. And I still really like their design, so much so that I'm going to make the XBX220 Mark II my main flyer. And I'll also be making a full build log for it very soon. As for the XB220, unfortunately you'll have to wait for part 2, which it should be uploading in a few days. I would like to thank XB for sending me their two frames. They have been really outstanding and if they fixed their carbon fiber quality to match their excellent presentation then I think they can become a major player in this hobby and we can expect great things from them very soon. And on that note, you can expect great things from me also. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. This has been an amazing review.